Hey everybody, it's Sherry B. And I thought I would um, change up my videos from last time. Uh, last time I had like four and a half hours of video that I condensed down to just under an hour, but I didn't really talk through it and I didn't really explain what I was doing. So I thought this time um, I would split it up into two different videos um, and I'm just gonna go over what I'm doing. So this is my starting process. It's free flowing acrylics. For this part, I had purchased some new paint that I really wasn't happy with. It's not um, a very good quality paint. It's actually great if you have kids, a lot of bright colors, there's a lot of paint in each container. So uh, the paint itself isn't necessarily terrible paint. It's just not the quality paint that I'm used to. So I uh, switched. Uh, right now I'm still using the um, the old paint and here I'm using charcoal. So once I have my free flow acrylics down, I try to find the faces. So I think you know by now that um, I'm into portraiture or figurative art. And so I just make a bunch of squiggles all over and then I turn the page, turn the page, turn the page until I find the faces that I'm looking for. And then I outline in charcoal. So here you'll see that the charcoal lines have already been done. Now you can seal this with um, some sort of uh, charcoal adhesive, but I really don't bother with this stage one. It's very smelly and I would have to go outside. And as I was painting this one, it was still winter. It was you know, February, March. So it's still pretty cold outside and damp. So I didn't really bother with the uh, spraying of the adhesive. So I just kind of skipped that stage. And again, it is very smelly. Even once it's dry, it stinks so bad. And I paint inside, I paint inside my uh, bedroom. So I don't really want that smell. So um, here you see I'm painting around the forms that I've already made. I'm just adding little squiggles, little flowers, uh, adding different colors. And again, this is the paint that I don't really like. It's very thin. It's almost got like a weird jelly type consistency to it that I didn't really uh, um, like at all. I, there's not much coverage. It kind of slides over the paper. This is watercolor paper. And um, usually the acrylics that I use are golden. And sometimes um, there's a few other brands that I use, but they're all pretty high quality brands. So this one, it's just not really adhering to the paper that well. It's just kind of sliding around. I don't really like it. So eventually you're going to see where I switch over, but I'm still trying to push through. I'm still trying to like this paint, but to be honest, I don't, I don't really like that color paint. And, um, yeah, so here's me painting, adding more colors, adding more layers turning it around. Now, each time I put a layer of paint down, I do let it dry all the way so I don't end up with mud. And um, this is where I finally decided that the paint just wasn't working. So I switched back to my golden heavy body and golden uh, liquid paint. So free flowing liquid paint. I have more heavy body than the free flowing. So I do tend to use um, spray bottles and things like that just to get the flow down. So I'm adding my green because as you know, I like to paint a lot of florals, a lot of nature scenes more than interior. I'm trying to remember the last time I painted like an interior uh, painting. It's been quite a while. And I'm just adding different layers, adding my green. adding some lighter tones, trying to cover up a lot of that other paint that I just really did not like. And see my, I don't know if you can tell from here, but the coverage is so much better with this golden paint. Um, it just really has a lot of opacity to it. Um, and it really covers and sticks quite well to the watercolor paper. I even have some, uh, red, I think it's called red apple 
like craft paper, craft um, paint, I'm sorry, not paper, craft paint, that works really well. And I have some old Martha Stewart craft paint that I use and that sticks really well. So, and here I flipped it over, it's already been drying and I'm gonna add some bold bits of color to it. Now I did pick some new um, paints. I did order some new paint. So this is the Nova paint. So I did watch, um, I think her name is Betty Franks. She does a lot of um, layered abstract painting and she uses Nova paints. So I follow her on YouTube. So um, she re recommended this paint and I thought, well, I was having so much trouble with that other paint that I purchased. So I did order some Nova paint and I really do like it. It is nice and thick, uh, has great coverage. And then you'll see here, I'm trying to light some things up, adding some, this is actually gonna end up being my hair outline. Um, but painting's all about layers, as you're gonna see. Just going through. And I'm, at this point, I don't really have any design in mind. I'm just kind of, whatever strikes me at, at the moment I'm painting. So there was really no, you know, design purpose. I'm just painting what I think looks nice. I'm adding colors. Um, most of this is not gonna even be visible once, once I'm done. Um, it's just adding layers. And I thought, well, that needed to be darker. So I've added some, I think this is copper. It's a copper color. It has a bit of uh, metallic to it. And that one is a transparent red oxide on the other one. This is just a flesh. This again is the Nova color. It goes on really well. Just the flesh tone, just giving me my basic shapes of the faces. I don't finish the face until the very end. If you've seen my other videos, you know the face is the last thing to get finished. And I'm just playing, just adding color, adding depth, layers and layers on top. Uh, again, always let your last layer dry before you add your new layer. You're gonna end up with mud if you don't. And just adding more greens, greeny blues, adding a little pop of color. This is actually a fluorescent pink which I thought was really, really nice. It really pops. And um, part two, I'm adding the collage. Now, of course, the underpainting has dried totally at this point. Okay, so this is the, probably the part I like the best, to be honest, is the collage. Um, so I purchased a lot of different types of collage papers. These ones look like, like old newspapers with floral, um, paintings on them. There's birds, there's butterflies. It's pretty light. Um, so I was trying to add this to the top just to kind of give like, almost like a skyline, but not really. Um, so you can use almost any sort of adhesive here. I use um, acrylic medium. I think it's like a, like a, maybe a satin gloss medium that I'm using. So you just treat it like glue. You spread it down, spread it all over the, wherever you're going to put that piece, put the piece down and then put the adhesive over top of it as well. So it's basically how you collage. Um, you wanna make sure that you saturate it you know, all over so that you don't get any air bubbles or anything like that. And again, it's just like paint. Think of it as paint. So you're layering layer over layer over layer. And eventually you're actually going to um, get to a point where you can't really work it too much anymore because it's too wet. So at that point you want to step back and let it dry all the way, but you can get pretty far in one session with a collage before it starts to get too soggy. Um, I also have some different colored tissue papers. Um, that I'm covering up and I'm going over those really bright fluorescent flowers that I made with tiny sheets of uh, like a red, 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 maybe like more of an orange tissue paper, just to dull it down just a little bit. 
um, but you still have that pop of color underneath so you can really see the fluorescent underneath and just adding different shapes different textures um, some of the paper is like a mulberry uh, tissue paper it's kind of thick actually and it has like uh, strings of plant material and things like that that you can see through once it's once it's all dry so there's some darker olive colors and then some thin just plain tissue paper in different colors you can actually paint your tissue paper to like put designs on top of it um, which is pretty neat I don't I haven't really done too much of that yet I've just been using the plain sheets so again I'm going over the flowers with some orange and red tissue paper adding more layers I did like that little rose that I had painted there even in the the paint that I didn't really like that much so I kind of kept that even towards the end and uh, just layering up some different shades now at this point I am starting to think more about design uh, than I was before I kind of have an idea of what I want to make so there's a lar pretty large piece there that I'm putting on Getting a lot of the acrylic medium on and making almost like um, grass all different shapes adding it in you can actually get to a point where you just everything you look at you think to yourself I could probably use that as a collage it can I guess it can become quite dangerous if you think about it so I, I went from having like three or four different kinds of paper to like this giant container full of all different papers that I can use for collage now. And it doesn't take long before you have a pretty good supply um, of different collage papers. And again, I'm layering up the flowers. I don't really think too much about you know does this color work with this color I, I really just put down what I think I want to use and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't if it doesn't work I just cover it over with a different a different shade I try not to think too much as I'm working um, I know that kind of sounds silly but if I if I overthink it I tend to not do things or I kind of feel restricted if I'm overthinking it so I really don't think about anything I'm just putting down paper and choosing different shapes and just kind of going with it these are a little bit darker it's like a mulberry color and this is um, quite thick the paper is quite thick Sometimes I tear the shapes to give it more of a rustic feel to it. Sometimes I cut them out um, with scissors and things like that. So it just depends on the kind of shape that you're looking for. It's funny because I feel like I should talk through this whole thing, but I don't, I don't really think it's necessary to talk through the entire video. Um, you can kind of get the gist here. Just laying them down. Adding different shapes. Looks like I'm starting on the hair on this one. It's funny because I, I think I changed her hair color like three times. It just wasn't um, it just wasn't looking right to me. It was too light. So again, if you don't like something, don't don't worry too much about it. Just keep going. The more you add to it, the more layers, It's it just adds depth and interest to it. I tend to put the hair down in large blocks. It's 
And I do like to use um, like a, a metallic in the hair. Make her more of a redhead. Large, larger pieces for the hair usually works best. I like to use the mulberry paper on the hair just because it has a lot of texture to it already. It has um, quite a few like swirlies and pieces of like the, the rice um, plant. I think it's like a rice paper. And has different flecks of um, textures and shapes inside it. Usually, and, and then here I'm adding depth to the lighter hair. You always have shadow and light even in hair. So I do add quite a bit of different textures and different colors to the hair when I'm making it. Again, adding more to the flowers. They just weren't the right color. So I'm just adding more, more layers, more tissue paper. And I'm adding um, like a white, white mulberry paper. It had like flecks of um, like a red wine, a wine red color to it. It was very attractive. So once you put this little sliver inside there, it gives it a whole new look. And again, I'm using quite a lot of the glazing medium. You're gonna, if, if you get into collage, you're gonna want to invest in a lot of glazing medium. Uh, you used quite a bit in one painting. So if you're out shopping, don't bother with the little jars, get a giant one. Adding some lighter shades, trying to lighten up that real dark green background. You don't really see it as much here, but once it dries, it really does pop quite quite a bit. It's very nice when it's done. Adding a bit more light colors, lightening up into the sections there. Okay, it looks like this is about it for me on this one. There, if you're interested in seeing how it turns out, please make sure you stop by and look at the next video.